I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to do some Bible journaling from Job 511 using some P.H. Martin's watercolors, really intense watercolors. And the verse is, the lowly he sets on high, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. But I'm just going to use the text from the first half of the verse. To set up my page, I sketched it out several times so that I could get the placement of everything where I wanted it, and I put it onto tracing paper and then put it underneath so that I could trace it onto my page. And then I'm going to start my watercoloring with these P.H. Martin's watercolors. You can use the dropper and put out a little bit onto a plate or onto a tile or some sort of palette, but I'm just going to use them straight from the bottle itself. And these watercolors dry completely, almost completely, I should say almost completely instead of be too definitive, but they dry and they don't lift again. So you can put colors over top of colors and be okay with that. Now with the balloons, when you put words on them, they're going to curve. So I had my little lines there I wanted to get rid of because these watercolors will also trap pencil underneath of them. And I had that one spot where my lines were still showing and I wanted to make sure that I was able to get rid of those. And I'm just going to paint each one of these on here. And if you put the color onto a palette or something, you can make it thinner or thicker. I'm just going to go for straight up color on these, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And if I want a little lighter color, I can just get more water on my brush in order to lighten the color instead of having just the straight color out of the bottle. But it really depends on how heavy and how intense you want the color. The balloons are really bright, so I thought it would be fun to have them just straight up. They are also solid ones. If you want to get really crazy, you can do multicolored ones and do patterns on them and everything. But I wanted just straight up ones because I was going to put my, um, my text onto the balloons themselves. If you're not going to put your text onto the balloons, then by all means, go ahead and do patterns. And the reason that I'm doing hot air balloons is because this is the week of the hot air balloon festival in, I think it's Albuquerque. And I've always wanted to go to that. Someday I might be able to go see that. But I thought this would be a good weekend to post this page. I had this thought running around in my head for quite some time to do for a um, for this particular page. I do have a notebook full of all of the ideas that I want to do someday. And I, I just write them all down. I put some in my phone. There's some in a notebook. There's some that are just sketches in a journal that I have so that I save those ideas for when I have time to create them. And for this particular one, I just wanted something that in a happy way shows that the Lord lifts up the lowly. And I thought balloons were a really beautiful way to, to talk about the joy that the Lord can bring to the lowly. A lot of times when we think of either someone else being lonely or ourselves being at the bottom of our own little ladder or in a, in a bad place, it just seems like even if God saves us, it may not be a joyful thing, but it really is joyful. As soon as you see the hand of God moving in your life, it can't help but be joyful, especially when it's a big surprise, because usually when you're at the bottom, uh, the hand of the Lord coming in to just pull you out of something tends to be kind of exciting and, you know, surprises you. And that's where a lot of that joy, I think, comes from. And these balloons communicate that very, very well. And I'm using um, one of the things I'll, you'll see in a lot of my videos when I do use a brush for something. I use silver brushes. They're by the Silver Brush Company. And they are in the black velvet line. So they're all black brushes. And they're really beautiful. They have a good point on them. So you can get a nice, tight, detailed line as well as they hold a lot of water and pigment. I've had a lot of classes that I've taken from other instructors and stuff. I take watercolor classes in person and I always use my my brushes and I've turned a couple teachers on to them like people don't seem to know about them very much so I like sharing these wonderful brushes. All the supplies by the way are going to be in the description down below so if you want to check out these uh, watercolors they come in sets of 12 you can buy them in sets of 12 
and you can also get them. I think you can get them in onesies, and I, if I can find them as onesies, I will link them down below as well. I'm ironing my page, and I put a piece of paper on top of it so that it's good and dry before I put the final iron over it to really flatten it. And the reason is because I have, in the past, gotten a little bit of color onto my iron and moved it. So if your pigment or your watercolor pencil or whatever you're using is still wet, you want to make sure that it's at least dry. And usually one pass over it with a piece of paper on top is enough to dry it. I'm using a micron pen to add my lines onto all of my balloons. And I like to add them afterward because if my brush slips and I end up having to make one balloon bigger than I planned when I was doing my pencil lines, it's real easy to adjust the black line. So I'll speed up here so we can get through this a little quicker. And you can use multiple sizes <clears throat> of the micron pens. I'm using a heavier line for the outlines of these, then I'll use a thinner line when I get to the strings. But if you get one of those sets of micron pens that have a whole bunch of different sizes to them, those work really great. There's also ones that come in different colors. There's all sorts of options and things that you can get so you can create a lot of different effects with your Bible journaling. And these pens don't go through. And the other thing about these um, these watercolors, as well as pretty much almost all watercolors that I've tried, there's been a couple brands that I found that did bleed, but most watercolors don't bleed through. And even though these are really intense colors, there's no color on the back unless I spill a little bit over. So in that area up at the top where that teal balloon is, if some of that teal seeps underneath, then I'll get a little bit of that on the other side, but that's not going to kill anyone. And even if you do try some watercolors and you find that that brand bleeds a little bit, don't beat yourself up over it. It's just one page. You'll know not to use that one. Put a sticky note on it or a piece of masking tape and say, don't use this in my Bible so that you remember what you don't want to use next time. And sometimes you'll find that some colors will bleed through more than others. If they're heavily pigmented colors, sometimes some of the deep purples or really deep phthalo blues and stuff will bleed more than others. So test them. Find a page in the back of your Bible and you can try them out and see what works. I'm also using a white pen on some of my darker balloons to add some some of the words. And the white pen I'm using is a Signo Uniball pen, but you can use any kind of white gel pen that you've got that works. You can use all different kinds. Uh, the Uniball pens also come in silver and gold, so there's lots of other things you can do with those too. I'm not fancy with my lettering. I just do whatever my hand makes as lettering, so don't stress out if you're not a fancy letterer. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, feel free to click the like button, share it with your friends over on Facebook, and on Twitter and anywhere else that you'd like to share. You can watch more videos, go take a class, click on my face to subscribe by email so you get all of my Sunday videos in your inbox. And I'll see you next time. God bless you.